Hey, yo. What's up, guys? What's up, guys? What's up, guys? What's up? A6 back at it again with a whole new episode of nothing. We ain't got nothing. Right, going into 2022 with nothing. Right, because, I mean, well, there's so much, right, we can talk about. We can talk about, like, you know, the stock market situation right now with the Pelosi's. What's that? You know what I mean? I, I, ain't, I ain't privy at all, so, yeah, so well, Nancy, fill me in. Well, Nancy Pelosi just shot down the... Uh, Skeletor? Is that Ma- who, Michael Jackson? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Did you, did you saw that clip, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to post it. <laughs> that was funny as shit, dude. But uh, yeah, she she's been doing some shady shit in the stock market. She just shot down this thing about being able to make certain types of stock deals mm-hmm. that uh, they're trying to put regulations on, and she's like, no restrictions. You know what I mean? But it turns yeah. out that her, yeah, like yeah, she's yeah. feeding her husband information, mm-hmm. who's making tons of money, mm-hmm. and get this. Apparently, that's she, that's the same shit that Martha Stewart went to jail for, by the way. Yeah, uh, uh, maybe, maybe insider trading. Pot, yeah, okay, okay. If yeah, I, I'm not exactly sure the exact, that's what it was. Correlation. Like I mean, it. yeah, I mean, I, I can't give you specifics on exactly what it was, but insider trading, trading is like essentially. Like giving and receiving secrets about stocks, right? But get this: they they said that she is doing better mm-hmm. than any of the most powerful stock investors in the world. Mm. That's- so. So definitely, definitely sounds like she's, she, you know, she's got some information. Right, right. I was listening to Russell Brand talk about it. He was like, "Oh, this just just seems like her. It's just her hobby on the side to be the best stock broker in the world, right. or whatever right. her case may be. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, aside from being the speaker of the government, yeah. the house, speaker or whatever. of the house, yeah, mm-hmm. speaker of the house. I'm like, you know, okay, that's one thing we could talk about." You want to talk about corruption in politics, you know right. what I mean? Right, but see, on the flip side and shit, well, she says, oh, no, 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 no. That is my side deal. I do the politics because I want to help people. She bought a $25 million mansion in Florida. Well, but, but here's the thing. She was just saying something about Elon Musk, how he shouldn't have that much money. How, like, so, I, so I'm sitting here. Now, yeah, because, you know, because she understands that, you know, with having that type of money, having those type of numbers... Grants you a extremely heightened and elevated level of influence over everything. It just does. Right, right. So doesn't she? Because she's got those numbers. She could buy. Right, people. right, right, right. But see, it, it, but in a way, it almost sounds, <laughs> it almost sounds like she hating on that nigga. You know what I'm saying? It, you know how appropriately that I say it that way because he is African American. She hating on that nigga. I think this boils down to what I've been I've been hearing like pretty much since I was a young kid. She, she knows she know he can fuck up her money. All right. That's what it is. Well, no, wait, listen ahead, to me. Go ahead. Listen to me. Go ahead. Since I was young, I've been hearing, you know, the government is there to make money and the banks are there to make money. Everybody's there to make money. And everything that the media and everybody throws at you is there for you to not look at the money. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like like everything we're dealing with. Everything. COVID, uh, racism, uh, the list goes on and on, by the way. You know what I mean? Like just people hating people. In general, you know what I mean? Racism isn't just a race issue any, anymore. It's just hateism yeah. is what's growing in this world, you know? But all yeah, that of, hateful bigotryism. Right. And all of that shit is like, so, okay, even let's let let them look at the sex predators too, like Epstein and just Lane Maxwell. Mm-hmm. Let, we'll even give them that to look at. Since everything else is, since they're starting to look at the money trails, mm-hmm. we'll give them something even bigger to look at. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like. It's and the distraction. Right. So that tells me they want to keep the money inside. Mm-hmm. So if somebody like Elon's making money on the outside, they're like, let's stop him any way possible while mm-hmm. still allowing us 
to do the exact same thing. No, they're trying to, I mean, it's like, you, you got to remember, like, it's one big money pot. It's just in different sections inside the pot, and they're trying to figure out how they can and start siphoning off that nigga, bro. That's all it is. Yeah, yeah, of course. But, I mean, that's what they've been saying about all, all celebrity. Like, Michael Jackson had so much money, everybody just wanted a piece of the cut, and you know what I mean? And so they killed him to get to his money, you know See, what I mean? Like, the thing, the thing that he did that was smart was he, you know, he was buying up, you know, some of these, you know, dead, you know, dead groups and artists' intellectual properties and shit. I swear, I heard he bought Nirvana. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about Nirvana, but Queen. I know, but I know the Beatles for sure. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I so. actually heard that he had beef with Eminem. And because and Eminem was going so hard on him back in the day in the videos, mm -hmm. like you know, there's that one video where it's like Michael Jack. He's dressed as Michael, and his nose falls off, and he's like, ah, ah, ah. like you know what I mean? He really went hard on Michael Jackson, yeah, right? Yeah. He went hard on a lot of people, man. So yeah. Michael Jackson bought all Eminem's entire catalog. No, no, he did. I swear, man. No, up man. until a certain point, he bought everything. So I'm like. How the fuck does that work, though? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like who, who would he, who would he be buying buying your publishing from? Well, let's just say I'm I'm working with some small company that works like with Sony, and Sony gets a percentage of everything they get and everything. You know, you give them a percentage, and then when they sign you on, the big money, the big money uh, draw is sell us your work. You know what I mean? You're working, you're doing art. Sell it. Well, we'll see, we'll see. Okay, see, it's like when you sign a contract and shit with them, like un unless it's distribution, they own your shit. Right, right. But contracts have changed over the years, so we can't even specify. Like I have a book on uh, the music, music law, mm -hmm. the music industry, mm -hmm. that's pretty much null and void now, because a person can just like go do some. Yeah, you, know, you can make money on your own now, pretty much. Like, and, as hard as it may be for some people to accept, this is the reality of things. You know who the music industry has to thank for that? Uh, I, I, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The guy from the Kit Kat commercial. Who? The guy from the Kit Kat commercial. The fuck? Anyway, go ahead. What? Nah, Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy? Mm. Okay. okay. Yeah. Because you remember, you know what I'm saying? You know, Because yeah, I remember. Remember Soldier Boy tell him, you! Bing! Soldier Boy, tell me that shit. No. You remember that song? No, I don't. Okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe throw a little baby clip off it, like bling. But um, but basically, bro, you know what I'm saying? He had to, like, bro, they made he made that song originally on old shitty Fruity Loops. Right. <laughs> old shitty Fruity Loops. You know what I mean? The old shit. You know what I mean? The original junk was dirty as fuck. It was grimy as fuck. It was basic as shit, but it was catchy as fuck, right? But what made that joint blow up was when he made, like, you know, the little dance to it and shit. Like, because I get you like this. If TikTok was what it is now, back then, that nigga would have made way more money. He would have made, made way more money. Because people, like, all of the shit, like, all that shit you be doing on fucking TikTok is, you know, motherfuckers was doing this shit on YouTube back then. And it wasn't people were doing that back then. That's how he made so much money. Well, where, where did he serve? What do you mean? Soul, he's a soldier, right? <laughs> Stupid. Um, or is it stolen street, valor? Street, street, street army. Stolen valor. Street army. Stolen valor. Not a soldier for real. Just one, you know, like. Well, a, well, well, soldier, not soldier boy. Oh, soldier like, boy. like with soul. I guess, yeah. 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 Got soldier. I got gotcha. you. Right, little little twist on the words there. Gotcha. All right, we can switch that up. I, I I never really listened to it, but then again, there's a lot of guys I never listen to. I tend to not saturate myself with other people's music. It just I can't. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I can, but mostly I can't. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Uh, I think the last time I I, I studied a, a set of artist music, it was Tiny Tim. Tiptoe through the two you, know? <laughs> yeah, you know? But anyway, I like the weird shit. So, um, wait, you said on the... Uh, I caught this on the, on the way in that you almost got in an accident on the way over here? Mm-hmm. Like, a, like, like I, I could have legit T-boned the fuck out of somebody. Did you, like, scream? Um, part of it, yeah. 
But then the next part was a hard ass fucking swerve to go around him because I didn't have enough time to slow down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm coming up, coming up the goddamn road and shit. And so like coming up the street, right? You know, you know how Route One is two lanes. You know what I'm saying? Two lanes east, east side, north and south, right? So I'm coming up the lane, right in the left lane, I mind you, right? Right. Motherfucker comes out from the right side from one of the little shops or whatever, right? Is trying to come across and go south, right? They come out in the middle and stop in between both lanes. Just stop there. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I see the motherfucker coming and shit. Like, I mean, even before I can get up close to the motherfucker, I see him coming and shit. I'm thinking it's going to, you know, go and just go in and go ahead, you know, because, you know, they got the little middle area there, right? Right, right. So, I'm thinking, you know, that that's what they going to do, right? So, I'm just, you know, I'm not hitting the gas and just cruising and just waiting for them to make their move and going to get out there because they have plenty of time to do that, right? Well, they say never stop when you think something. You know what I mean? Stopping is the worst thing to do in, like, when you think an accident's about to happen. A lot of people, they see something weird happening around them, and they just hit the brakes. Yeah. Because they think, if my car is not moving, nothing's going to happen to me. But, like... Yeah, yeah, you forget that there's all kinds of shit going on behind you. Right. Yeah. I mean, and the thing is, like, I mean, I knew there was... I mean, obviously, there was other cars and shit behind me or whatever. You know what I mean? I was the first car at the light, so I was the first one, you know, out, out the gate or whatever. But, like I said, the motherfucker comes out there and shit. I'm thinking they're just going to continue on to get in the middle and shit, but they just stop dead in the middle and block both lanes. You know what I'm saying? I can't swerve to the left because if I go to the left, you know, I'm pushing that median in oncoming traffic. I'm not going to do that. And that's exactly what he was trying to do. Swerve. Like, that's how he drives, by the way. He swerves. He, he's lying. Like, he doesn't, like, just, like, get in another lane. He doesn't lane no, change. No, I, I don't listen to a goddamn thing he says. He it's aggressively swerves I, I float into any when I No, when I'm driving, the whole purpose is to float. <laughs> I don't believe that bullshit. But anyway... I said, the motherfuckers just stops there, right? And I'm like, like by the time I realize, okay, this motherfucker's not moving, I'm like, shit, right? So I'm like, slam on the brake and start turning, start turning to the right, right? Right. Turn to the right, go on the shot, just swerve all around onto the fucking, like, onto the shoulder, get around him and keep going. Because this motherfucker just stopped right in the middle and blocked both lanes perpendicular to the street. All right, real quick. You said you don't drive like that, but you just described, you just described, like, all right, I'm going up this way. The car is here. I had to swerve this way. Then I went. Over, then I slammed on the brakes, hit the right, swerved around him, and yeah. kept going. I had no choice. I had no choice because I didn't have. Sounds room like to he stop. drives like that. No, and, you know what no. I'm just saying. No, I'm no, saying, no. I, I I can drive like that. I prefer not to drive like that. You <laughs> I know prefer what I'm saying? not to ride. I'm fully capable of driving like a fucking maniac and not getting an accident, but I don't want to drive that way. You know what I'm saying? You might be in the car with me and feel like that's how I drive all the time, but you're wrong. Well, let me ask you this. Since you stopped driving for, like, FedEx and shit, do you feel like you drive more calmly? It ain't, it ain't got nothing to do with FedEx. It got everything to do with just tickets and shit. You know what I mean? It got nothing to do with FedEx. Because, like, you know what I mean? Like, in my, in my driving career as a professional driver and shit, bro, I, I, I never had any fucking accidents. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Tickets. I mean, speeding tickets. I mean, like, no, none of that bullshit as it pertains to work. You know right. what I mean? All of my shit is personal vehicle. Oh, he drives that way. Well, I, I used to. I, yeah, I mean, I, I got, I got, I ain't, ain't going to cap. I got a couple of reckless tickets on my shit. I'm not going to fucking lie. I used to drive like that. But like I said, it was those tickets, those fines, those points, and how all of that stuff translates to costing you more money. It was like, all right, you know what? It's time to chill. Right. That's that's the simple fact. All right. Let's um so so glad you didn't die. Yeah, I could have killed that bitch cuz glad you made your little swervy. Yeah, me too, bro, cuz like I said, the first thing was to slow down, right? Cuz then I like I'm going, the motherfucker's coming thinking it's going to keep going. They just just stop. <laughs> like what the fuck? Just deep. Yeah. <laughs> like in like in the middle of oncoming traffic. What the fuck are you thinking? <laughs> like, you should have just not pulled out there if you weren't going to go all the way the fuck over there. I can just picture how slow their eyes, like, they stop and then they're like... I know they got scared, bro. I know they... No, no. Their eyes probably got big as shit. Because I, <laughs> you got to understand, from their perspective, if they're in the car, right? Right. They're looking... Like, their vehicle is facing this way, Right. They turn this way and see me coming straight at them. They just see two headlights go, and then like, yeah, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I know their eyes got big as shit, and they probably hearts probably started beating fast as shit. Like, better never do that shit again. Right. You know what I mean? The only way they would have learned that lesson any better is had I fucking hit them right in the door. Well, praise God, everybody survived, and 
you know, or we'll praise virtue. Now, but see, the fucked up part about it is it's like, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I can't even say the opportunist in me because I'm not really built like that, but understanding an opportunistic mindset in this life, I should have just hit him. I should have slammed in the brakes and fucking hit him and went to the fucking hospital and got paid. Yeah, I hate that shit, man. I, I got a I got a friend uh, one time I was riding with him and there was somebody standing on the little island mm -hmm. where you know everybody where you turn and everything but there's yeah. an island there yeah. and the guy was standing off the island mm -hmm. so it was kind of like a little iffy you know what I mean and my buddy just goes and turns and looks at me and makes the turn and the guy jumped out of the way he would have got hit and I remember thinking like yo wait a minute, did you just try to murder a guy and f right here with me in the car? Right, like, right. Did you, did you try to attempt or attempt vehicular manslaughter? Right, but like, it, what, the crazy thing is is because I always tell him, I always have to tell this guy to turn mm -hmm. or he will miss the turn. Yeah. Even if he knows. Mm -hmm. He's a mischievous guy. Mm -hmm. Like, he'll be like, nobody's telling me to turn. Even though he knows the turn's here and he'll be like, well, I guess we're going to have to wait until they tell me. What the fuck? You know what I mean? We'll be down the road and somebody will be like, dude, you were supposed to turn back there. And he's like, oh. And he'll make the turn. And I just know he's doing it on purpose, right? So, like, when, when, this, when this happened, that's, I was like... That's retarded, by the way. When this happened, I noticed a shift in his, in his demeanor. Mm -hmm. Like, he was, he was going straight. And I guarantee you he was probably going to be like, Andy's not telling me to turn. So I'm not going to turn. Oh, wait. Somebody's over there. Oh, look. And then he made the turn all quick, like real quick, just to try to hit this dude, I swear. Because, I, and I told him, like, you always hit the dude. And his answer was, like, wouldn't have been my fault. Like, I swear, his mind, he just, like you said, that opportunistic, yeah. like, mischievous, right. like, but see, fucked it, up mind. Right, but see, that's a little different, though. You know, that's more sadistic. That you is, know what I'm saying? Yeah, because yeah, the thing yeah. is, had he hit him, it wouldn't have fucked up his vehicle at all. You know what I'm saying? Like, what you gonna do? Hit the guy and, and, and then call the ambulance? And be like, I need to go to the hospital because I hit somebody in my car? No. Right. It's a okay. little different. Uh, like, you know, he's aiming to fucking hurt somebody. Speaking of sadistic, real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and show you this video mm -hmm. right quick and get your opinion, reaction. Wait, wait, wait. Beforehand, most of the comments that I've gotten, I've gotten nine thumbs up, mm -hmm. but 15 comments that don't agree with mm -hmm. me saying it was sadistic. Mm -hmm. So so you're ratioed right now. I am ratioed at the moment on that comment. That's okay. That's okay. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, it, it, it ain't about the numbers. It's about the communique. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, so that particular video, I'd seen that before, but not the outside footage. Like, when I had seen it, it was just the inside footage inside the door, right? Right. So, this is what I'll say to it, right? Dude fucked her up with that bat. You know what I'm saying? Broke the bat. I, I didn't see the bat, but it looked like a steel bat. I don't know. Maybe it did break. I don't know. But I'll go back and watch it or whatever and shit. But irrespective of whether he broke the bat or not. He fucked her up. You know what I'm saying? Like, even before I knew that was a chick, when I first saw her, I was like, oh, arm, arms arms shattered. Right. Arms shattered. Jelly arms. Yeah. It's oh, yeah. Shattered. You know what <laughs> I'm saying? But it's like, right. You know what I'm saying? But the thing about it is, it's like, all right, let's say you were that guy, right? And you hear somebody trying to break in where you fucking live. You know what I'm saying? And you open the door and you see a motherfucking arm just trying to get, trying to reach and open the door, right? Whoever is trying to come in, they're not trying to come inside for good reasons. You know what I'm saying? There's some sort of nefarious reason. Like, you know, the level of it is another issue, right? But we can probably pretty much agree that it's for some sort of nefarious reason. Either, you know, to rob, hurt, maim, or steal some shit. You know what I'm saying? Well, it, I mean, I could say that there's plenty of other reasons. Like, to knock on somebody's door who's got something you want. Or to like... But, but that's not what that was, though. That wasn't a knock on the door. That was a reach to the mail slot trying to unlock the door and get in. That's what I'm saying. But she was only going to get into the main hallway of the building. Right. 
Now, and also, you could tell by the video, she weighed about 90 pounds if she was in the shower. So right. when that arm comes through, it's like a skeleton hand. Now, the arm itself yeah. is as thick as the bat. Mm-hmm. You know, mm -hmm. maybe even thinner at the right. wrist. Okay, that's fine, but but in the moment, okay, in the moment, who's gonna stop to ascertain all of that? You know what I'm saying? Most people will not. In addition, and the main, this is the main reason why is because all you know is there's an arm trying to break in, right? You don't know who's on the outside of the door. You don't you don't know what they got out there. You well, know what I'm saying? Apparently, number one. Apparently, he did know. That this happened more than once, mm -hmm. and so maybe he was sick of it. Think about this: he walked out of his apartment with the bat. He didn't peek out, see somebody trying to break in, yeah. go back and get the bat. Yeah. He was already firmly aware of what was happening. Mm -hmm. He opened was, that door was ready to take action. He yeah. opened that door to do some damage, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that yeah. Was, he opened that yeah. door to do some damage. Yeah. Now, as a man, I think. That, and people are going to say I'm fucked up because of this. But I'm just thinking historically, survival-wise, mm -hmm. instinctively, mm -hmm. like, he, I have he, to... He wasn't really in, in, in any danger. Correct. Yeah. No danger. Yeah. I don't believe him to be... Okay. You know? Now, I get you, which is why I was able to pick that out. But the unknown anomaly is what I said. You don't know who that is the outside the door or what they got. They could have a pistol. They could have a MAC-10. You don't fucking know. Well, how did he know that she was even doing it because he just opened the door with a bat like i mean look i'm telling you this you open the fucking door and you see somebody trying to reach in through the mail slot trying to unlock the shit you know that you know somebody's trying to get in you know they don't live there you know you're trying to do some shit they ain't got no business doing you know that, what i mean that's true all of that is all of that is factually true you yeah, know what i'm saying right now like i said the unknown anomaly is what else what else is on the outside of that door that's not in yet you know that could possibly be harmful you know what i'm saying that's the unknown area you know what I mean? But it's like the thing is, it's like from us being the viewers, being able to see it, you know, from that third person bird's eye view perspective from the inside and the outside, you know, our, our perspective <laughs> is not going to be the same as if we were the guy just, you know, opening the door and seeing somebody trying to break in. Well, you know what I mean? No, now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What? This is because I got to interject here. This is something that we, as a, as a people, as a society, American society, we get. Uh, I've seen videos about this, mm -hmm. about our pensions to attack. And possibly shoot some of the unknown, mm -hmm. like and to judge things based on the unknown. I wanna, I wanna look at that. Fo I wanna look at the scene right now based on what I know. Mm -hmm. What I know is it was an elderly woman who probably seemed to have some kind of mental handicap. Now, the three you know all of that because of what you saw in the video. I, I know it was an elderly woman. So right, right, right. She was but probably see, mentally disturbed. Right. But see, the thing is, your perspective is going to be different than if you were the guy. Who opened the door with the bat? So you think? If you know what I'm saying? You don't like you don't know any of that shit. And we, the thing is, at this like maybe maybe he knows who that bitch is. I he, don't know. No, he did. In the comments, if you read through, mm -hmm. the, you'll find links to shit. Like mm -hmm. like like as I did more research, like she, he, she had been doing this before. Mm -hmm. It was just he was fed up and yeah. wanted to so break okay. her arm. Okay, that's the part. That's an assertion, right? That you believe him him to be fed up and decided to take it out on her. Well, I saw him do it. Well, yeah, I mean, well, we saw we saw that that was the 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 physical outcome. But what I'm saying is, like, you believe that that was his intent. Well, let me ask you like, this: like, 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 I mean, you can't prove without a shadow of a doubt, based off of the video, that that was his intent. If you saw the arm coming through the mailbox, mm -hmm. would you break the arm? Um, I just wouldn't already. It's a female arm. It seems old and elderly. So I'm gonna try to handle it in another way. I I, I got you, man. If but some I, roughneck out there, like I'm gonna get in this house. If it looked like a big chunky hand that couldn't even fit, you know what yeah. I mean? And he was trying, I yeah. might be like, "What the fuck?" I might put my foot on his hand so he can't get it out and be like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Or something. I, I got you. You know what I'm saying? But then then the unknown comes in. Let's say you do that, and then five shots come through the fucking door, and you're dead. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, but also that's what I'm talking about. That. Fear of because you can't well, say five shots might shoot me, so I can't do anything safe. I have to take the most crazy response because something might be there. Okay, okay, I, I understand. But but the thing is, it's like because of the unknown in that, is that a risk you're willing to take? 
Well, I'm convinced that this was not a matter of like risk, that this was just a matter of maliciousness. Like I see this hap this mm -hmm. this lady's doing this again. Mm -hmm. I'm about to break this bitch's wrist. Mm -hmm. And you know what? There's not a part in my head that's telling me, hey, it's an old lady. Because to me, that immediately cuts her off. Like, I, I swear to God, like, I'm for men's rights and all of that. You know what I mean? Just like you. I love Roma Army. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. She was crazy. But uh, my thing is, though, is also as a guy, mm -hmm. I feel like all through history, we've been raised to protect our family. What is our family? Women, children, mm -hmm. and our and elderly. elderly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And there might be somebody who's mentally disabled. Now, unless we're Spartans and we kick them into a pit mm -hmm. when they're born, mm -hmm. we also protect them. Yeah. So when I see this lady fit, clearly fits three of the criteria. You know what I mean? And who knows if that mental disability makes her the mind of a child. Who knows? Yeah. I just say I would personally handle it with a soft glove. You know what I mean? Because I know I can. Mm -hmm. Like, even if she slapped me in the face while I was trying to get her away from the door, I'd be like, come on, lady. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, we live in a brainwashed society where certain things trigger people. I and agree. people people have been, have been, like, conditioned to where one word or one action or one yeah. sentiment gives can you, trigger the you, whole world yeah, of yeah. thought patterns. Yeah, and then people start lashing out and shit. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if there was a way, you know, to bring things back to the good old days, you know? But unfortunately, what we're looking at here is, and I hate to say it because I'm a Gen Xer, and you're a Gen Xer too, by the way. We're Gen X. Um, <coughs> I don't identify with any of those fucking labels. I'm me. Eyes nigga. Yeah, well, you know what? That's a very Gen X trait. You know what I mean? We're going to bust our ass at work and get shit done. It's like we saw our parents falling off because our parents, maybe not specifically you, but me, mm -hmm. I saw my parents falling off and I was like, okay, that's the hippie generation, mm -hmm. right? And I was like, well, I'll copy the boomers. I mean, not the boomers, whatever. I, I don't know if it was the baby boomers, whatever was before the hippies. The my grandparents, you know what I mean? They were strong. They had a house. They my grandparents went to the military and all this shit, you know. So I was like, I'll do that. I won't act like dad. Mm -hmm. But still, even then, as this gener Gen X is creating this generation of, it created the millennials, and then the millennials have created Gen Z, which we're basically calling a throwaway generation. And I'm sorry to say that to the Gen Zs and the and the millennials out there. But, like, I almost feel like if there is a conspiracy to get rid of a large percent of the, of the population, it's because somebody up there thinks that the last few generations have been bad batches. I'm going to tell you something, though, bro. Like, I, I hear what you're saying, but I believe the opposite to be true. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you, if you want to talk conspiracy, I believe that they look at those generations as the prime ones that they want because they're easy to control. But but also impossible to control. I, I, I understand exactly what you mean. But the reason why it's easy to control is because, remember, there's an old adage. Those that stand for nothing fall for anything. Right, right. And that's a key component to why, you know, a lot of these young generations right now are, you know, fucked up in the game, bro. Is because they don't stand for shit. You know what I mean? You know, most of them have no real sense of self. Exactly. Fucking identity. You know, I, I was thinking about this today, man. Like, if we, like, a hundred years ago, let's just say, we you worked on a farm with your dad, you know what I mean? And you had brothers and sisters and everybody. Mm -hmm. You would, as a small kid, you'd see your dad lifting the bay hill and you'd be like, that's a strong man. And you'd try to be like that, mm -hmm. you know? And and that would naturally... Start as a young age trying to pick that heavy ass shit up too. Right. And Which is what eventually created the whole term country strong. That's where the shit came from. Right. So then you see your dad come in after a long day of the freezing winter to pay for you, and you're like, that's a man. I want to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, now who's teaching the kids? Other kids. Yeah. <laughs> so, social media. <laughs> so think about that shit. Like, generations are, of children are being raised on a brain trust of idiocy. I mean, I'd like to break that apart and make it make complete sense. To me, but I, I'll, I'll just dissect it. 
A brain trust of his idiocy. What do you mean brain trust? Like, the... Like, okay, so when I say the brain trust, like, what I'm referring to is the the pockets of like-mindedness on, on social media. Oh, yeah, okay, well, uh, what is it, vacuums? Uh, I forget what they call it, like, uh, a place where you can just go... I mean, I feel like the way... Talk I, to people who are the same I mean, as you. I mean, it don't even necessarily have to be people you talk to and shit, but just, like, just depending on what type of social media you use and shit, sometimes you just see things. It ain't even just a matter of who you talk to. Sometimes you just, you know, run across things and you see things that, you know, match up or mirror your sentiment on things. You know what I mean? Which is why I refer to it as the brain trust. Because it's not necessarily all the people you communicate with, but just the like-mindedness that's, you know, that matches yours in the social media realm. Right, right. Now... But see, the issue is If you're trying to be like everybody else... Right, but see, here's the issue. The issue with that is... (laughs) <laughs> when um <clears throat> when you don't know what you stand for and critical thinking skills fall by the wayside you have a hard time being able to you know discern fact from fiction and be able to fish between you know the real shit and the bullshit or when you're told what to stand for and you don't have the yeah. skills to critically think it out but yet you go ahead and stand for it anyway yeah. or or even worse and and this this is this these are the kinds of things that are a product of what we're describing. When you have, you know, various bots account or whatever platform that just you know that are basic it almost seems like they're just copy and pasting the same goddamn narrative on many different troll accounts. There's people doing that shit. You know what I'm saying? And they're doing it probably because they're being paid to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, not yeah. Giving, full not, time. Like Yeah, not giving time. a fuck about, you know, the potential consequences or ramifications of it. You understand what I'm saying? This is my point because you don't stand for shit. You don't care. You don't give a fuck. Well, people just want the money. If you can get the money, yeah. And see, yeah, you know what I'm saying. But you know, like, Gen Xers don't think that way. We think, that's hey, what I'm saying. we don't want the money to go away. Can everybody please start behaving? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Here's the thing: everybody can't be a famous TikToker. And let's yeah. just say how many people there are in the world. And let's say like half of them became famous TikTokers instead of becoming anything with their lives, right? How much money would just go into, like, <coughs> new Yeezy? Into <coughs> 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 new what? <coughs> Damn. <coughs> into new what? If everybody was just going to be TikTokers, right, how much money up in the world do you think would just go into, like, new Yeezys and new, like, jets to, like, to, to fly around in? People would... they All people want to do is live what they started seeing when... <coughs> Like MTV and shit hit, and like E Hollywood, people started just seeing stars way more. Yeah. So like your hometown doesn't matter at all. The people you grew up with, they don't fucking matter at all. Mm-hmm. What matters is getting that money and getting yourself to where you can fly to Malibu and get a house. You know what I mean, like or something. Yeah. Like it's a it's a serious it's a serious serious issue, which makes me say. That there's probably a group of people in the world that think that this is a botched generation. <laughs> that we tried to make an easily uh, pliable, malleable generation. Yeah, that's the word. <laughs> but we accidentally created this just group of kids that even though they're malleable as fuck, malleable, mm. and they can be forced or to think a certain way, they're still useless. They're useless for all except voting. Like, that's the only thing they're good for. Like, their body may as well be, like, uh, in, a, in a building somewhere, plugged into the Matrix, and they're just, like, watching commercials all day and clicking, I like this one, I don't like this one, I like this one, I don't yeah, like this one. Yeah, swipe left, swipe right. Mm. Right, right. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no. Yeah, it's probably the best thing that they could be used for at this point, because you get them out there and try to get them to climb a rope. You watch these TikTok drill sergeants. And they're trying to, and they're showing like their their new recruits, you know. Yeah. There's this guy. He was like, like this, and he had his feet on the wall. And they're like, pull yourself up. He's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like, <clears throat> and they're like, I bet you if it was an Xbox controller, you'd know what to do. Mm-hmm. And the fact is, they're absolutely right. He he had his hands on the rope really tight. His hands and fingers. If that's all you needed, if he could have just gone like this up the rope, like. 
It would have worked, yeah. But, <laughs> you know what I mean? Human bodies don't work that way. So all his arms, his back, mm -hmm. his legs were useless. But his hands were just like holding that rope. Weren't going to let go. Mm -hmm. Strongest part of his body. So he, So we're looking at... Hands, brains with hands is what people are turning into. We might as well just Crane. have 20. Crane. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hey, I don't want toes anymore. Make those 20 fingers. So I want 20 fingers, right? <laughs> Fuck having 10 fingers and 10 toes. Was that was it Eon Flux, <laughs> an old cartoon that, that had some shit like that? Where the most, like, all the goddamn fingers come up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Remember that shit? Yeah, yeah. That was weird. That shit was weird. Yeah, MTV same, liquid television. Yeah, same joint. Like, uh, did y'all open this shit, a bitch? Like eyelashes was like a Venus flytrap and shit caught the fly in her fucking eye. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. Weird. I, the thing I liked about it the most was like it was supposed to be this utopia, like this utopian society, like mm -hmm. like a utopian society, but with like criminal elements, yeah. like corruption. Yeah. But yet also there's this mystical aspect where like. These beings of pure energy and light existed. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, kind of yeah. like, kind of like Akira's. Yeah, mRNA tech. It was almost like they had Akira's. MRNA tech. Oh, is that what you think? Yeah, they're trying to make mutants and shit. Oh god. Well, tech is just getting out of control. Tech is just getting so far. <coughs> yeah, but they're gonna do that shit until they're able to implement the 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 neural interface. You know, first, first it's gonna be the optical interface, then the neural interface. Well, what do you I think? We, fucking tell do you think that we should buy into the metaverse right now? No. I think we should get a. I think we should get a small building in the metaverse. I'm gonna tell you something. The ASX building. I'm gonna tell you something. Like, while I say no, I say no from my own personal perspective and my own personal feelings. But as far as society goes, the answer is yes. And the reason why the answer is going to be yes is because the generation that you just mentioned, they're going to want to escape to that. I mean, we're getting to the point now like, where... Almost like the movie Gamer. <laughs> almost like that movie Gamer. <laughs> like, if, if it could be like that, motherfuckers would be with it. Dude, we're starting to split money up like it's nothing. We're starting to make money out of nowhere. You know, NFTs, right? Yeah. I could go ahead and draw a picture. Mm -hmm. Make that picture a public property and sell portions of it. You know what I mean? For a certain amount of money each. You know what I mean? And then I guess depending on whoever... It's, like, it's just... It, it's subjective. That's the whole deal. Which is, you know, just like, you know, artwork in general, paintings, all that bullshit. Like, what's valuable is subjective. Anyway. Somebody gave Joe Rogan an MF, an NFT of Elon Musk, muscular Elon Musk mm -hmm. painting. Mm -hmm. It was a picture of Elon Musk all painted, all buff, walking through some forest. And it was in a crazy lit, like, uh, frame and everything. And they gifted it to Joe Rogan. They were like... like Physical or a physical, physical okay, thing. That's, that's not an NFT. Exactly. What I was saying was, they made it look pretty, but the NFT itself is not a physical thing. No, it's not. So when you hand somebody, which is the whole, which is that's what the acronym means, non fungible. Right. But here's the thing: if you hand somebody a physical form of that, yeah, and you don't have property rights on that, yeah, picture, mm -hmm. then they can sue you, right? So now pictures are becoming so much more like logged in. And unusable now, like it's almost like the internet made everything like willy nilly to where people could take things from anywhere, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And like make their own anything. But now it's all starting to get locked down, almost like reality, mm -hmm. where it's like, no, you can't put my picture anywhere mm -hmm. that I've drawn. Yeah. It's unless you buy a portion of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Otherwise, I'm gonna take it or take money from you or yeah. own that wall or whatever the case may be. Yeah. But see, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. This is this is what I believe is the scam with NFTs and shit. And it's only a matter of time before people get got. Right? A lot of these, <coughs> types, like, I mean, like, I don't know how much you've looked into, like, you know, different types or you know what the pictures look like. Some of them are straight bullshit. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Some of them straight bullshit. You know, some of them, you know, maybe the art, maybe the digital artwork is pretty cool or it looks nice, but most of them are just stupid. You know what well, I mean? back in the Renaissance era, there was like hundreds of painters. Yeah. Only some of them made it. Yeah. So when I'm thinking, like, if we let's say we did have a a, a, a small cafe in the metaverse, yeah. where we at once a week we went there and we had a, we make a stage, we get somebody to program and make a nice place for us, right? Mm -hmm. But we also want to have pictures on the walls, right? Mm -hmm. So if any of those pic if we want to have like popular pictures. They might be NFTs, and we might have to pay for to put those pictures on. Well, well, there's different. But see, I understand what you're saying, but you gotta remember with the nature of that whole game, there's different ways you can utilize it, right? So just hear me out. Part of the reason why NFTs have 
you know, some of the cra uh, NFTs that I've seen have some of the crazy value they do is because certain celebrities are plugged into them. It's kind of like apparel. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you wear one motherfucking shirt and shit in your video, all of a sudden, you know what I'm saying? You know, you were a designer, now you got, you know, pull. You know what I mean? You got motherfuckers that want your shit. You know what I mean? So you, you can charge more. You know what I'm saying? It increases the value of what your product is worth because somebody wore it or somebody bought it or somebody de by de facto vouched for it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that's part of the reason why a lot of the NFTs have the value they have. But the thing about it is, is that because... Like, when you look at it on base level, nigga, it's a JPEG, okay? It's a fucking JPEG, yep. right? It's pixels, right? Which, like, just, in, a, just <laughs> in, in the snap of a finger, right, could be deemed valueless because it's subjective what, what's valuable and what's not. You know what I'm saying? Like, like just hear me up. Like, for example, uh, this shit right here, right? Right. This don't... Got made probably in this house. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Let's say you took a picture of that shit, right? You chopped it up, framed it up and shit. You know, maybe you did a little editing on it and shit. You know, just do a little more to it than what it is. Just however your creativity saw fit, right? But now you have it as an image on your computer, right? The JPEG, right. right? Let's say you put that in the house, in the A6 house in the meta, in the metaverse, right? Let's say five years from now we still podcasting, right? You know, we got substantial following, monetized, whatever. Right, just hypothetically, right? That picture's in the in the house on the A in the A six house, right? This better be a payoff. You are building this up like I'm just, for I'm three just minutes. You. Tell me what you tell me. I'm I'm listening. I'm just saying this better be a payoff. I'm just telling you how the shit work. You know what I'm saying? It ain't necessarily about the image is what makes it valuable. It's the pull. Like, <laughs> it's the pull associated with it. You know what I mean? It could be just some images look tight, but that's all. You're right? smacked, bro. No, it, it ain't got to do with being smacked. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about, too. I just said the same thing you said. Hey, come on, man. Don't get in your feelings, man. I'm sorry. Here, have some Jack, man. I just, yeah, just pass it to you, bro. Go ahead. Hey, is there anything I can do? For, is there anything I can nah, do? Nah, I just like, you? what I'm saying is like, I... The thing, the thing about NFTs, man, is that like you can take advantage of it. Yeah. But it's it's so subjective. The market is is basically a house of cards. It, you it's know, a house of cards. I'll tell you. Let me let me build off what you just said. As far as if I had that picture in our area yeah. in the metaverse, if, if the, enough people if the, came, let's say if the channel blew up and somebody saw that, like you know, you know, can I get that? I want that. Right. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And I would say then yeah. it's got it's got more value. You see what I'm saying? And but here's the thing. Here's the other flip side of that. Once, let's say I make a painting, right, and then I put it digitally on the internet. Take a picture of it. It's on the internet now, and its yeah. value is on the internet. What about the painting on the wall? Is it still valuable as a painting, or because I'm now selling the rights to it, does I can't only like I? I'm just lucky. What if I sold all my rights? Would I even be allowed to have my own painting, like the original? Like what? You know what I mean? Well, see, that's that's where you know I guess you know it, that would be another conversation because you know usually you know stuff that you know involves being NFTs as far as pictures aren't things that were physical first. They've always been, you know, their origin has always been in the digital format. You know what I'm saying? Right, but, but most just, of them are pictures. Right, right. I got you. But I'm just saying, but their their origin was on the computer or on the tablet, the phone, or however the fuck it was made, not physically on a piece of paper or canvas and then screenshotted and then made digital is what right, I'm saying. Right, you know right. what I mean? So but the reason why I'm saying <laughs> because like I said, man, just a snap of a finger, the shit could be deemed worthless has everything to do with subjectivity, right? And let's say But your odds of some of that happening, if you have enough people that like something, the odds of all of them not liking it at once are very low. I got you, but see, that's 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 where the money grab is, right? And most most of the time, bro, like if that's just gonna happen, it's gonna it's not gonna happen to somebody with celebrity. It's gonna happen to somebody that don't that wants to, you know, try to be in that mode and shit, right? Yeah. So like, yeah. So, so like I said, so a motherfucker could buy the junk from a celebrity who, for two hundred thousand, right? Right. But a celebrity paid like we'll say one fifty, right? So somewhere, somewhere in between that celebrity buying it for one hundred fifty thousand, right? J probably just because the celebrity owned it, right? Ooh, such and such owns it. This shit. So now it's worth two hundred, right? So motherfucker bought it for two hundred, right? Right. 
Let's say the motherfucker just decides to just sit on and hold it and shit, whatever. You know, kind of like stock believing in shit. You know, they can buy, they could sell it for more than that because you know such and such bought it and shit. Right? The owner decides the stock value, the main contributor. Because if you bought it and you're famous, I could then tell people, hey, exactly, it goes up now. Exactly. You control the stock value of your artwork and all that. So NFTs is a way of making the stock market. Uh, yours on your so, own intellectual property. So, do you understand why I'm saying, like, literally at the snap of a finger, that shit could be deemed worthless in the hands of somebody that has no clout? They just had the money to buy some pixels, and now they just got some pixels ain't worth shit. So they could buy all the pixels and then drop the price. Mm -hmm. That's fine. No, nah, but do see, what you want with it, because I got the money. Mm -hmm. Right, but see, but see, the thing is, it's like the people that are in the positions now stuck holding on to a picture that they paid two hundred thousand for, right? Now that shit worth five, if that, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh shit, you know what I mean? Trying to sell, like, just imagine. There's always trying to go sell clout. It. There's always going to be clout value. Like, okay, let's just say this. I was playing. I'm playing a, a very popular game right now, where the you get leveled up, like increasingly through the game, mm -hmm. and throughout the game, the the weapons you get are increasingly stronger, right? Mm -hmm. So some of them are just useless now. Mm -hmm. Useless. Mm -hmm. And I worked hard to get them strong for that level mm -hmm. to win everything, right? Mm -hmm. But now they're useless, and I have them sitting in a trunk. Now, I could have sold them to some guy, just sold them off. Right. But I was like, no, nah, I remember that. I'll keep it here in my trunk. Even though it's worth like $4, you know what I mean? It's worth nothing to anybody. Yeah. I still see it, and I remember that it had like clout. It's got clout because of like remembrance. It's like well, Carrot well, Top. Well, that's called sentimental value. It's like it's like Carrot Top. You know what I mean? Like, if if all of a sudden it was like Carrot Top's going to be on our show, regardless of who likes Carrot Top or doesn't like Carrot Top, you know what I mean? If they watch, people if they know about us, they would be like, "Whoa, Carrot Top!" You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. him again? Like, regardless of if you've ever been known, mm -hmm. you there will always be some kind of value to somebody. Some guy's going to be like, "Hey, remember them old A6 NFTs? Those are available over here for like five bucks." You know, and they start by buying them or something. You know what I mean? Because they're easy to get right now. Mm -hmm. And then somebody might be like, "Oh, I." Where'd you get that? What's that? In the future. Who knows? Like, the way things work, like... That's what I'm saying. It's all subjective. So, you know what I mean? So, because of that subjectivity and shit, like I said, something deemed value at 200000 now could be deemed valued at $300 the next. So, let's bring it back around to the Gen Xers because we believe hard work earns cash, which you hold on to. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. They can't, you can't, they can't. Now, here's the thing, though. Can't somebody just subjectively say the dollar ain't worth shit no more? Just like an NFT. Like, we work our ass off for our money. Yeah. And our money, and, and, and well, society is keeping that money at a cap right now, so we don't, like... Well, I, I don't think those two are relatable, <laughs> only because when you start talking about the dollar, you're talking about fiat versus an image whose value is gauged based on fiat. You know what I'm saying? Or, or crypto. Really, really, I think it's crypto. I think the, the main one that's tied to the NFTs is Ethereum. Yeah, yeah, I think. yeah. Let me just say this real quick, that uh, I was reading something about Bitcoin mining. I, I happen to know a guy who's got like six Bitcoin miners in his shop. Yeah. And uh, he's, yeah, he's got some servers in there or whatever. Yeah, he's got like these little boxes They're li with a little server. green light and a tube running from them. I guess it pulls the heat. Yeah. Or something. It's a server. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's six of them in there, mm -hmm. constantly mining for Bitcoin. I think it's like eight hundred a month for each one makes eight hundred a month. No, no, no fucking way. Not coins. Yeah. Dollars. Oh, okay. So it's making like little minuscule pieces of Bitcoin and shit. Okay, go ahead. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. So um, is apparently if yeah. you buy a Bitcoin machine, it makes about eight hundred a month, and it, depending how how much you paid for it, you'll get your money back in so many months. You know what I mean? But what I hear is in all the other countries where Bitcoin mining got big, it's been banned. Hmm. You know what I mean? And we're like one of the, we're the ones that are allowing this to keep going and happening. But I just kind of see it as like a way around. It's like everything, the music industry was run by moguls who had everybody's neck on lock, you know, and they wanted to fuck everybody that wasn't nailed down. Hmm. The same with the fucking banking industry. It's run by moguls who have all of your money in their mind. Like, you know what I mean? And they have it on lock and they keep everything under control. And now the internet came out and it's like, okay, is this thing a good 
thing or a bad thing, having all this freedom and shit. Mm. But some people are like, hey, guess what? There's a new kind of money that we'll accept. Mm. You know what I mean? I, I, I personally, if I'm doing Bitcoin, I'm definitely going to let people buy with Bitcoin. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. If I've got some, I'll, if I put some merch up for this show, which uh, who knows, I'll accept Bitcoin. Mm. I'll accept Ethereum or whatever they got going on out there. You know what I mean? Mm. So... It's all the numbers game. It's all just playing playing the numbers game. All of our money that we make anyway yeah. is balanced on the stock market. So there's a bunch of guys out there in the stock market going, oh, every day. You know what I mean? Every day they're like, oh, maybe, 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 uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Sell, sell, buy, buy. Like, like, No, the stock market, their fluctuation of the stock market is based on the value of money. <laughs> what you're referring to is, is the foreign exchange market. Like money versus money. That's right, perfect. right, right. I'm just, I'm just saying. Like when they start deciding what the U.S. dollar is worth and putting it up on a bulletin board, yeah. you know what I mean. That's when it's like, okay, are we gonna fucking work our way around this? Well, but see, or the, are we gonna keep on rolling with their structure? Yeah, I mean, but see, like what the structure is based on is like what the dollar is worth versus the other major currencies. You know what I'm saying? It's not just like one exclusive. Minus the others, you know what I'm saying? It's like they're all tied together. Right, right. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, <laughs> like, for example, like, what is a U.S. dollar worth versus a peso or a euro or a yen yeah. or a rupee? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that that's true. But also, like, it, you know, there's this, there's always been these conspiracies out there. You know, there's one that, like, there's going to be this new thing called the, uh, the Amero, mm -hmm. which is like, like the euro and the American mm -hmm. dollar mm -hmm. formed mm -hmm. together. Between, probably between like you know Canada, United States, Mexico, blah 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 blah. And like probably was, all probably all the way down. But go ahead. I mean, mm -hmm. a new form of money and shit. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, Bitcoin. Like I, I don't know if it's a way around that or if it's going to push us into that. You know, but having and when I say Bitcoin, I mean digital currency. Yeah, all of it. Okay. Not just, just Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Okay. Yeah, it's like saying Fushigi when you really mean contact juggling. Fushigi ball. Remember that commercial? No. Uh, I don't know. It's not here. But it's like a, a little ball that you can roll around on your hand and it looks magical. You know what I mean? Okay. But the actual arts contact juggling, people call it Fushigi. So this is the same thing I do with Bitcoin. Okay. All of it's Bitcoin It's good as you explain that because some people would be confused. Right, right. Okay. All of it's Bitcoin to me. Okay. And uh, if I do, if I was to get into it, that would be me taking the next step, I think, towards like, like digital survival. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of kids out there. Whether whether they're a useless generation or not, I'm not sure. It could just be my Gen X inability to understand that these kids have tapped into a way. Mm -hmm. Like, pretty soon there's going to be machines running everything, and these kids are going to be, like, completely ready to be lazy. You know what I mean? Like, and, and to do whatever whatever coding they need to do because they're not needed muscularly anymore. Yeah. Like, they, we just need them to do... Shit work, you know what I mean? Like mental gymnastics. So maybe they are ahead of the curve on that. But I mean, just the thing with them is they just they grew up integrated with the shit. You know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't like you know they grew up and then oh there's some new shit that I gotta learn. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like yeah, I remember. Like which is what Bitcoin about, is to people like us. Think about it like this. Think about it this way. <laughs> Now you think about how maybe a parent, usually a mom, you know, be sitting talking about how oh my bad, saying how they was talking about you know their baby was sitting there playing with the phone doing all kinds of shit. I didn't even figure out how the fuck to do that, and they can't even talk yet. Like what the fuck? You know what I'm right, saying? You hear that right. shit a lot. Um, you know what I mean? And that's what I mean because they they they're growing up integrated with this shit. When my son was five years old and could find everything he needed in the phone. You see what I'm saying? just you know and it's just really it is second nature to them i'm actually lucky because i kind of refused to grow up so i started learning shit at a different level i think i figured out how to do a lot of shit like um on my own you know what i mean and when somebody hands me something like a computer program or something i just right but think about this think about how you grow up integrated in some shit using an interface where you don't even understand what the words mean Right, right, right. But you, but you're able to figure out like what you're trying to get to and do what you want to do, right? So imagine once like 
it starts to click where you understand what these things mean, how, you know, it, it, it increases your learning curve. You know what I'm saying? Dude, do you remember where you were the first time you heard the term www dot something and you, like, had to learn it, like, what it means? You don't remember that at all? No, I mean, I know what you're talking about, but I don't remember the first time I heard the shit. You know? It's just, like, we kind of grew up with that a bit. As opposed to, like, my father, who could probably tell you the day he first heard about www. You know, my dad, I remember specifically when he heard of the World Wide Web, he was like, they're going to get you, man. It, you see, they're even telling you. It's a spider's web. It's a web, and you're going to be locked in. They're going to get My dad you know, was you, like you know, you know what's funny? That's, that's the analogy I use for Twitter. Yeah. yeah spider web. It's a spider web, yeah. Uh, so now I want to talk about... COVID nineteen mask and vaccine mandates. I thought I thought I thought we was done talking about this. Well, I just want to. Well, actually, you can't be done talking about something that just happened. I got you, but you know what I'm saying. But nigga, you the one to put it out there. You know what I mean? Hit that shit on the head one more time. Just like I'm done talking about this shit. Well, my my problem here is that it just now yeah. leaked into my life. Okay. Like in a way that was not quite expected. Okay. So I was, I work at a print shop, and recently I was printing, well, I was cutting out posters, right? I had to cut out 100 posters and wrap them up and get them ready for shipping. Mm -hmm. When the poster said, uh, nobody, unvaccinated people may not enter this building. Mm. It was 100 of them. Yeah. Right, and it goes out to D.C. residents. Mm -hmm. So, I recently heard that Senate or whatever shot down the mandate mm -hmm. that uh, Biden and everybody was putting in. Right, that ever, that it was going to be mandated to have the vaccine. Mm -hmm. But then, after that, I was listening to the radio, and it was just like. Uh, DC uh, DC mayors, you know, saying that after tomorrow, everybody's gonna have to have to have vaccines in order to get into any public event or anything like that, any kind of public place, restaurants. You know, you want to go to the gym, you want to go to a Bas ball ba game. Basically, like New York. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. So that shit's starting to happen there. And from what I'm hearing, and I'm, I am, and I'll just say this right now, even though I shouldn't have to, mm -hmm. I'm the only unvaccinated in my shop, right? Mm -hmm. I wear a mask not because I have to, but because I'm kind of worried about, like, the Omicron that people are spreading around. I don't want the vaccinated people getting me sick because the fact is that it's still spreading if you're vaccinated, okay. period. If you're, if you're vaccinated, it still spreads. Now, people will say, like, oh... Um, if you got sick, right, mm -hmm. if you weren't vaccinated, you may have died. You know, that's the whole, like, angle of that. Mm -hmm. Is it true? They're trying, to guilt, they're trying to guilt you, guilt trip you into that shit. Right. Is it true? I'm not sure. But everybody I know wants me to get the shot, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm not talking seeing... about that work? Yeah. Or are you talking about in your personal life also? Also, people in my uh, personal life. There's a few people. That's, a, that's the first thing you mentioned Family. to me. Family. Okay. They're, they're, they're like, uh, we all did. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Hey, why don't you? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Coming to Thanksgiving or oh, so, something. So now it's peer pressure now. You know, Mark of the Beast type shit. You know what I mean? Like where you know for a fact what's happening. The the FDA and the, the and the the World Health Organization they're putting out the data, mm -hmm. telling you, you can still get sick, you can still spread it. In fact, if you get it, mm -hmm. if you get COVID and you have the vaccine and the boosters in you, the COVID's just going to mutate into something else and spread mm -hmm. more. Right. Omicron Omicron spreads more than uh, you know what I mean. It spreads faster. It's less uh, dangerous, but it spreads faster, which is good. Herd immunity, you know what I mean? And hopefully everybody gets it. But, um, yeah, it, it, it suddenly it struck home where it was like, fuck. Now, now I hear word like, talk like, oh, we're a union shop. Everybody has to be vaccinated. So then that leaves me thinking like, hmm, I might have to find another job here pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. Like... <laughs> I'm not saying that it's right or wrong. I'm not telling you I'm right. I'm just telling you as a person who watches 
Like if you watch all the stories of the things that have happened over history and the atrocities of man, right? Picture a few times in history where people have been like, no, I'm scared, I don't want to go there. And people have been like, go! And tried to force them to do something that they're scared to do. Think about any time in your life maybe you were scared to do something and people were forcing you to do it, right? And I don't think it's a weakness for me to say, no, I'm scared of that. Mm. I'm nervous of that, right? For me, it's not a natural course of action. So I, it makes me nervous and I don't want to be pushed into it. Mm -hmm. But then to be ostracized by everybody you know and love, hey, people were my friends and family, right? I don't hate any of you. Right. In fact, I, you know, I feel a little bit of concern for your situation. So why not just feel concerned for my situation and not be like an asshole about it, you know? Instead, what we're seeing is, despite the fact that the mandates were shot down in uh, the higher levels of government, at a state level, you can still be like, no, I'm mandating my state. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm going to mandate my area and put a lot of people out. I went to the hospital the other day. They asked me if I was vaccinated, mm -hmm. and I said no, and it was a contactless visit. <laughs> Literally, they asked me questions about how what was wrong, why I was there. Then they uh, came over to me. One lady walked up to me and handed me papers, didn't ask me to sign nothing. And the papers were my prescription, and I left. First time it was that easy. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? First time it was that easy. I'm like, man, you know, that being easy is a byproduct of, like, people hating you for what you are. You know what I mean? And, like, whatever. So... Yeah, I guess we just did a little episode about that. So, I mean, what do you think, man? I mean, are you worried about these? Because think about it. You're talking about maybe finding another job, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to have to start some kind of or find some kind of organization of people where we're like a network of people that have work and need work mm -hmm. and don't require vaccinations and stuff. You know what I mean? Like try to put something like that together, you know? You know, but that requires time and energy. And yeah, I mean, but like, see, the problem with shit like this, especially when they try to shove it down your throat, is they, they try to they try to crush you into a choke point. You know what I'm saying? They crush you into a choke point quickly, right? And force you to make a rash decision and shit, right? And usually, it's based. Usually, your decision is going to be based out of desperation. You know it's to re yeah to relieve the pressure. You can get like honestly like see, wait 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 let me finish though. See, go ahead. This, go this, ahead. this is the thing. Man. It's like especially when they put your job on the line because you got to think about you know how you put food on the table, how you pay bills, all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, obviously, you know nobody wants to feel financial hardship. You know what I mean? Nobody wants to go through that. But you know who wants to willingly put themselves in that position? You know what I'm saying? And that's what, you know, a lot of this bullshit banks on. You know what I'm saying? Which is... That's that's by hook or by crook. That's not even coercion. You know what I'm saying? That's by hook or by crook. It's like, you know, it's take it or leave it, but, you know, we know most of y'all not going to leave it. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's the harsh reality of it. You know what I mean? But it's like, you know, for me, it's like, you know... It's a little different for me only because, you know, I, I know what it's like to have been down before, you know, I know what it's like to be a rock bottom, I know what it's like to be homeless, I know what it's like to have slept in my car, all that shit, you know what I'm saying? Um, I've lost jobs before, I've quit jobs before, you know what I mean? Um, so hardship is not something that I'm not familiar with, so, you know what I mean? If I get presented with that scenario, I'll be like, look, you know what I mean? You know, same type deal, you know what I mean? Either, you know, get the jab or you ain't got no job, I'm like, okay, well, y'all have a nice day. You know right. what I'm saying? Now Straight let me the fuck up. Uh, now, okay, I'm stepping now because I'm I still I'm talking about what you're talking about. So let's. So the pressure, right? The pressure is what's happening. Yeah. So you may not feel a lot of pressure because you're like, hey man, I'll step off. See, the thing is, hold on, wait, wait. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So you say I'll step off, right? Yeah. If you try to force me at my job, I'll step off. Yeah. Now let's just say ten more times you try to get a job and you start getting frustrated to the point where it seems like. Almost like that the relief of the release the release of pressure would be pleasurable. 
Like, you would willingly just be like, fucking give me that shit. That way I can just be like, hey, everybody, I did it. And then everybody will be like, yay, you can have everything now that you need. Like, it's like... But see, I, I, don't, I don't believe that part to be true, which is where I was going to go with that. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, what is the fucking guarantee that, you know what I mean? Because I got a job now. You know what I'm saying? You got a job now, right? Um, What is the guarantee that, okay, you know what? You know, let's say they present me with that shit that, you know, I'm like, all right, you know, I'll find, I quit that job and then try to get some other jobs. They're like, no, 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 whatever. And shit, like, fine, you know, give me the goddamn job. I get a job. What is the guarantee that that job is going to be paying me more or the same what I was working before. You know what I mean? Oh, there's no guarantee. I exactly. lost money when I went to my new job. Exactly. You know what I mean? There's no fucking guarantee at all. Right? So, for me, like, that's not... It's not a financial decision. You know what I'm saying? That's not a financial decision for me because, you know, like you, like you said, you know what I mean? You know, I pay attention. You know, I'm able to read between the lines, but also read the lines on the fucking paper. Yeah, you know what I, mean? I mean, if it's not a financial decision, then when the financial decision comes and you haven't factored it in, like the time, like like I said, you said I got a job, you got a job, but my job, like I just said, mm-hmm. might be at risk because of the mandates. Right. So I'm like, that puts me on another, on another level. So I'm gonna, I might be in a position where I gotta find another one, mm-hmm. and then I'll feel like uh, rejection. Now human beings kind of behave the same. So after certain amounts of rejection, pressure like the tension starts to build up, anxiety. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and you start getting like your, the people that you know and love are pressuring you. You only got a small group of friends who are like minded as you. Right. You know what I mean? And right. Okay, but when you say the pressure, are you speaking specifically about societal pressure, or are you speaking also about the financial pressure? Well, also self induced pressure. The self induced pressure of not being able to accept. Mm-hmm. constant denial so you keep getting denied and denied and you start being like fuck I'm just not I don't want this what anymore if, what if I, I got you but you know what if that is something that you notice in a pattern in your life of you know constantly being denied you know what I'm saying yeah like but I'm what if you've denied. already seen that shit you know but, what I'm yeah saying? but I'm not that's not for me like yeah. I'm not the type of person I get denied for certain things yeah. that I know that I don't deserve or have no I, I haven't you. worked to that level yet. Mm-hmm. It's like you don't get to have the malice drum sword. Yet. Yeah. I got you, but you know, but there's also a whole different dynamic to that when for example, you know, you work yourself to a point and then motherfuckers cut your legs out from underneath you. Denied. You know what I'm saying? Denied. Yeah. Denied. Right? That too, you know what I mean? Well, I mean, when you start dealing with only that, see it's, people have to have some wins. You know what I mean? You can't just do loss after loss after loss. Like, character gets built by losses, yeah. but it can also build a character. Only losses can build a certain character, like, mm-hmm. that you don't want to build. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, it, it turn you into a fucking um, a monster, a mad yeah. a madman, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. So, let's just say you, you start feeling this pressure, yeah. and it's like, okay, shit, man. Three things that I really, really want, I can't have because I'm not vaccinated. Yeah. If I get the vaccine, those things will come to me, right? And I'm just thinking to myself, like, what happens then? Like, are we now we're all lined up to be what? I don't know what happens with that. I don't. I'm just a little worried about the nefarious nature of humanity at mom at the moment. I mean, bro. I mean, we are. We, you already know the shit is creating. You know, a sub <coughs> subclass <coughs> citizen slash subclass human what they're trying to do. You know what I mean? So yeah, separate us, completely mm-hmm. separate us. Right, and hate each other for it. You know what I mean? And that's just, you know, stupid people following essentially pop culture instead of following what they fucking know about the people they deal with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so. well, I mean, if they, hey, if they stop and look and take a look, most of their favorite stars and shit... Also, like, don't agree with, like, forcing mm-hmm. people and doing mandates mm-hmm. and shit like that. So, mm-hmm. just think about this shit before you go... Uh, sheep, think, it's sheep mentality, man. Well, yeah, exactly. Just, I'm just saying, guys, think about it. Don't don't go flying off the handle, you know, it, mentally when you hear somebody speak about this shit. We're, we're brainwashed to get triggered by certain words. 
to act a certain way. I'm going to tell you something. So if you start feeling emotions over a word, immediately back yourself up and think, why is that happening? Who who told me to be that way? I'm going to think my own way. Let me tell you something. That whole subject right that whole subject matter right now is taboo as fuck right now. Like, you know, meaning, meaning it, just, it can cause a lot of tension very quickly. You know what I'm saying? In the same way that, like, talking about, you know, Arabs or, you know, particularly women with hijabs and all that bullshit right after 9 11 happened. You know what I'm saying? Right. Same right. type of deal. It's just, you know, it's a, very, it's a very nuclear subject matter. But that's intention. Yeah. It's intentional. It's a thorny issue. Yeah. It's intentional. This, this time around, this shit is intentional. And they know that shit. And the reason why they know that shit is because they know, like, fact for fact, man for man, hand for hand, the shit is way more fucking, it's way more us than it is of them. You know what I'm saying? And but if you got the people separated and shit, man, they're gonna be busy warring with each other and shit. By by the time niggas look up and shit, ain't nobody got no fucking freedom. Amen. Buy one of them tees from them, right? For two hundred thousand, right? <coughs> Hold on to it. You know what I mean? Because like the Bama you bought it for, you bought it for two hundred thousand and shit when he bought it. <coughs> that was gross, bro. <coughs> yeah, clean that up. Jesus oh shit! Fuck. I didn't even see that. <laughs> Hold on, man. Cut. Jesus fuck. Like I said, man. If, if either one of us, <laughs> if either one of us starts hacking, I think a mouth hit. I think a mouth skeeting. I didn't see that. Just I think it's mouth skeet, It's like a tiny piece of spit. It's not even, if you look bro. at it, it's not gross. Like, the thing is, if you just happen to glance at it and shit, just that one droplet and shit, you're oh. like, is that skeet? But the thing is, if it was like several splashes and shit of that same type, you would think it's skeet. Well, if it was like, there was clear one too, some clear, yeah. and only part of it was white. Yeah, but see, the thing is, you know I mean, you can, you know, drool and make that happen. He, like I said, he was, he was mouth um, Dude, you butt ski. He was mouth ski. You butt ski. Whenever you're pooping, it always is preceded and followed by a little ski. Very gay, yeah. but okay. <laughs> That's very, very gay. Before you leave the house in the morning, your dad's always like, here, put some ski on your skin so it's not cold out. That's all right, because... Because it's cold out. Just put some skeet on your skin. Yeah, that's all right, nigga. You was rubbing that shit in as, instead of Vaseline on your lips to keep him from getting trapped, motherfucker. He's like, come here, son. He just like, <laughs> he just, like take it right off the tip. To... <laughs> come here, son. Uh, and I, then I'm... he can't take it. He's like, that looks too juicy. I'm just sorry. sorry. Let me not act like... Uh... Hey, I don't even remember what the fuck I was saying now, bro. <coughs> Give me some more NFT. <coughs> yeah. 200. Mm.